Hey everybody, it's Nate from Explorers Life. In this video, I'm going to teach you step-by-step -step how to perform a camper electrical power audit so that by the end of the video, you'll have a really educated guess as to how many amp hours of batteries, watts of solar, and size of inverter charger you'll need for your own setup. This is just part of an overarching series about how to design and install a DIY camper electrical system. Now, if you've just stumbled across this video directly without seeing that, there's likely some things that we've already covered. And if you wanna check out that step-by-step -step guide, you can do so by checking the links in the description below. Also, I have a page filled with interactive solar wiring diagrams that are a complete A to Z solution for showing you exactly what parts go where, what size wires to use, fuse size recommendations, wire lug sizes, and all kinds of other stuff that will help save you time, hopefully some frustration. You can find that link in the description. Let's get rolling. You need to know how much power you use on a daily basis to determine the size of your solar system you'll need to power your camper. Sure, you can go buy a random solar kit and just go for it, but more often than not, that tends to lead to some disappointment in the performance of the system. And if you're like me, you'd rather do it right and just do it once. But be warned, this is an kind of easy but involved process because there's quite a few steps and quite a bit of stuff to do. You're going to need to gather the items that you'll be using or look up their power usages and put some numbers into a spreadsheet that I've made for you. But this will be worth it because after you've followed the step-by-step -step guide in this video and the accompanying blog post, you'll have a highly educated estimate of how much power you can anticipate using throughout the day. If you're ready to get started, physically go and get as many of the items as you want to power and put them in a pile together. For the items that you don't yet have, you need to make a list of the links to their product pages. Go ahead and do that now. You will need that going forward in this video. Not all electrical appliances are the same. There are AC components, DC components, and DC components disguised as AC components. It's confusing, I know, just hang with me. AC components. These are items that you plug into your normal household outlet. These are gonna be items like a coffee maker, an instant pot, blender, or a miter saw. Gather all of these items into one pile and put a sticky note with table 1.1 next to them. But wait, there's a catch. There are also DC appliances disguised as AC appliances. There are imposters in your AC components pile. There are likely items that plug into a normal household plug, which is AC electricity, that are actually DC appliances. Now these are items like computers, but let's just talk about how to identify these imposters. These items will typically have a wall wart or an inline power supply AC to DC power adapter. That component converts AC power to DC power. Take action. You need to segregate these items into their own pile and label it with a table 1.2 sticky note. DC appliances. Now these items will be wired directly to your DC distribution fuse block. These will be items like a 12 volt light strip, uh, 12 volt puck lights, 12 volt fans, max air fans, and a water pump. You need to segregate these items into their own pile and label these with a table 1.3 sticky note. Single charge items. These are gonna be items like phones, camera batteries, drone batteries, external charger packs, basically anything you charge up and then unplug to use. Put these items into a pile and put a sticky note on that pile and label it table 1.4. Full day slash per day use items. Now these are the items that you're going to let run all day, like a refrigerator that cycles off and on, a WeBoost 4G booster, or a hot water heater are a few examples. These items go into yet another pile and we're gonna label it table 1.5. Now, that's the last pile that we're going to make. Let's move on to the next step. Performing a step-by-step -step solar power audit. Now that you have your five separate piles labeled with tables 1.1 through 1.5, we're going to go through them pile by pile, item by item, and input the actual numbers to get you as close as we possibly can to get you a proper educated guess that will tell you how much solar power that you need based on how much power you plan to use every single day. This is where this spreadsheet's gonna come in handy, so let's talk about that. You can find it by following the link in the description below and looking for a bubble that looks like this. Click that bubble, press make a copy, and put your own title at the top. Now, you've got your own power audit spreadsheet. Table 1.1, AC appliances. Look for a plate on the device that tells you how many watts the appliance uses. You're going to be inputting these values into the table 1.1 section of the spreadsheet. Change the name of the item as necessary in column A, input the watts of the device into column B, input the number of minutes you plan to use the item per day into column D, Continue this process until you've entered all the items from your table 1.1 pile into table 1.1. 
Now your spreadsheet has been pre-populated for popular appliances and power outputs. If your needs vary, just change the values as necessary by altering the numbers in the green columns. Now if you anticipate not using an item, you can either delete the values in all of the green columns of that particular row, or simply input zero into the minutes used per day column, which is probably the easier way to do that. Table 1.2, AC to DC adapter appliances. You're going to need to look for a sticker on the wall wart or the AC to DC converter that tells you how many amps and volts is on the output side of the cord. It'll look something like this. Now head to the spreadsheet and change the item name as necessary in column A. Insert the output volts and output amps into columns B and C. In column F, you're going to input the minutes per day you expect to use this device. Next, you're going to repeat this until you've input all of the items from your table 1.2 pile into table 1.2. Now, the same thing I said in the last table about the pre-populated items holds true for this one as well. You can either change the items in the green columns or you can just put zero in the minutes column. Table 1.3, DC appliances. DC powered appliances typically hide their power usage for some reason. If you look for a label or a sticker with no success, usually looking online is your best option. To be honest, finding the item on Amazon usually actually yields pretty good results. Same as before, you're gonna change the name of the device in column A, then you're going to be looking for the wattage of the device to insert it into column two. Now sometimes the device will list the amps and the volts of the device rather than the watts. If this is the case, I've added an amps to watts calculator at the top of table 1.3, and here's how that works. Input your amps and volts into their appropriate spots in the table 1.3 amps to watts calculator and look at the resulting wattage reading. Insert that wattage reading into the table 1.3 column two under watts. Now to clarify, you don't have to do that calculator if the device actually lists the watts. Now change column five to represent how many minutes you plan on using this device every day. Table 1.4, single charge items. Now you'll notice that there's actually two separate table 1.4s. Uh, table 1.4a is for items with their battery size listed in watt hours, and table 1.4b is for items with their battery size listed in milliamp hours. So whichever one your device gives you, just go with that particular table. Change column A to the device name, change column B to the battery size of the device, and change column C to the number of times you plan to charge the device per day. Table 1.5, full day or per day usage. Now table 1.5 is for items that get used constantly. You'll have to take a constant measurement of your items over the course of 24 hours. Now this is good for things that cycle off and on like a refrigerator, but the pre-populated refrigerator option is based on a top loading ARB 50 quart 12 volt refrigerator. Now if you have the means necessary to measure the power usage of something like this, like a shunt or a kilowatt meter, go for it. But if not, that's fine. Just roll with what's been pre-populated and that should get you in the general ballpark. So, how much solar power do I need? Now that you have successfully filled in all of the blanks with the electrical items you anticipate using throughout your normal day, check out table 1.6. This is how many amp hours that you will personally consume per day according to all of your inputs as well as recommendation on battery bank size, solar array size, and a few other goodies. Now the numbers that you see here are really just general recommendations. If you want to spend more time in cloudy environments, maybe you should consider sizing up a bit. If your budget can't quite handle your recommended components, maybe size down a little bit, but always plan for expansion. But like I said, these are all general recommendations that I feel pretty confident in recommending. Any more is better, but any less is, is on you. Now that you know how big of an electrical system you need in your camper, now it's time to decide if you want to play the short or the long game and go with AGM batteries or lithium batteries. You can start that video here. And if you already know what type of batteries that you're going to get, it's time to determine how many watts of solar that you need to charge those batteries. And you can start that video down here. Now everything that you're learning here is put to use in our free interactive solar wiring diagrams. And if you haven't yet, you should check them out as they're a pretty complete solution for a high-end camper electrical system. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave any questions you've got in the comments below, subscribe and hit the bell if you wanna be notified when I make more videos like this one. And I will see you in the next video.